Hey everyone, Izzy from Endless RVing. This is a follow-up video to several other videos we did regarding firearms on RVs. We'll link the latest one above. Now, this is video number four, and because of your demand, we're doing this fourth video. This video is gonna be different than the other three. We do encourage you to watch those other three videos because information that is in those videos will not be in this video. But this video is a reaction to comments and questions that we receive. Those videos, guys, combined probably have almost half a million views combined between the three. So a lot of you have watched it and we do appreciate it. But we did get a lot of questions and we're going to answer some of those common questions in this video. So if you're new to this video, we thank you for joining us. And if you're back again, we thank you for coming back. So just a little background for those that are new. I am a police officer. I have been for 23 years. I was just talking to MJ, 19 months until retirement, which is pretty awesome. In addition, I'm a firearms instructor, a taser instructor with my department. So I've been doing this for a little bit of time. By no means makes me an expert but it just gives me a little bit of knowledge. I'm gonna pull my phone out here and I'm just going to read some of the most common questions that we receive and there's a few of them. So this is by far the most common yeah. question. How can I carry my gun firearm across state lines? Reciprocity. So if you don't know what reciprocity means, we'll start with that. The thing with gun laws is that every state has their own gun laws and you are responsible for knowing those gun laws. Reciprocity means that one state recognizes another state's gun laws or they're more specifically their uh, carry permits. Now, now there's different types. It, it can get a little bit complicated. I'm gonna to try to give you just the, the Cliff Notes version. Different states in our country have different gun laws regarding how you can carry guns. So you have states that are considered constitutional carry and just a broad picture that means that it is your constitutional right in that state to carry a firearm unless you're a certain person, usually being a felon, convicted of domestic violence, mental problems, then you can't carry. But if you're just the average Joe Schmo, hardworking, taxpaying American, you can carry a gun without a permit. And then you have states that require you to have a permit to carry. Now, a lot of those states tend to be on the coast, both on the west coast and the east coast, New Jersey being one of those states. You can own a firearm but in order to carry it outside of your home or kind of anywhere outside your personal property, RV not included, you need a carry permit. And there's requirements depending on the state. Some require to pay fees, some require you to have insurance, some require to pass certain type of tests. They're all different ones. Why this is important, is some states where you have to, it's either constitutional carry or you have a carry concealed carry permit. For example, if you have a concealed carry permit in Virginia, it will be recognized in many other states. I can tell you that carry permit from Virginia will not be recognized in New Jersey. So why is this important for you? You need to know the laws of the states that you travel in. You're the hardworking, law-abiding American, what you don't want is that you're coming from Virginia, you have your carry permit, you drive to New Jersey, and you get stopped, and for some reason, a police officer, somebody sees your firearm, and you wind up getting arrested and charged for carrying a firearm when you really didn't know any better. So this is really important. I say it because it can cost you a lot of money for your freedom. NRA, the National Rifle Association, they do have reciprocity maps right on their website it doesn't cost you anything also they always up to date on the latest laws out there so if you are in virginia you can put in carry i have a concealed carry permit in virginia it will tell you what states honor that what states have reciprocity for that so the next common question is should i carry my firearm with a loaded chamber now again for those of you that are very new to this i would suggest you get some training because you should know these terms that I'm talking about if you're going to carry a firearm, but I'm gonna quickly talk about it. So this is an empty pistol, cleared, empty. I'll just pull the trigger here, it's empty, okay? This magazine here is filled with dummy rounds, meaning they won't go bang. These are just for practice, everything is dummy rounds. So what we're talking about a loaded chamber. Loaded chamber means when you, end, when you put the magazine in, you actually have to charge this. You have to pull the slide back to put one in the chamber. Right now, if this was a live round and I pulled the trigger, this would not go bang because there's nothing in the chamber. Now, again, these are dummy rounds. If I charge it, you can see in here, if I just kind of do a little press check in here, you can see there is actually a round in that chamber. So that's what we're talking about, loaded chamber. Now, 
The question was, should I carry a firearm with a loaded chamber? This is my opinion. I will never carry a firearm that doesn't have one loaded in the chamber for several reasons. Many times when you're under stress and it will be a stressful situation if you need to use this firearm, you, you become very narrow sighted. You don't have time to think about drawing out, we'll talk about safeties or how, if your gun does have a safety, defeating the safety and now having to charge to try to get around downrange wherever your target is. Gunfights are, are speed and accuracy. Who's gonna get the first rounds into a target? People say, well, it's safer. Well, I, I guess it is. If somebody pulls a trigger and there's nothing in that chamber, it's not gonna go bang. But the safety with some training, the, this safety feature is built into this pistol right now. This pistol won't go bang unless I pull the trigger. This pistol, the safety is right here. I keep my finger on the slide until I know I'm ready to destroy whatever's in front of me. And then I put my finger on the trigger and then I pull the trigger. So that's your safety right there. This is your safety. Training is really important. The other reason why you want to carry one in the chamber, this magazine holds 10 rounds, right? So when I fill it up, there will be 10 rounds in it. There's nine rounds in here right now. If you remember from before, I put one in the pistol, I charged it. That took one round from the magazine, it put it in this pistol, this round's still in here. So you have one and nine, 10 rounds. But now I can put an extra round in here and I have 10 plus one in the chamber. So I actually have an advantage of having one extra round in here. My personal opinion, guys, I would suggest that you always carry one in the chamber. I don't know of any law enforcement agencies in the United States that do otherwise. I know some militaries overseas do that. Put in the comments below, what do you do? What do you think? Next question, this is a really common one also. Is my RV considered my home? Especially if you're a full timer. Again, it depends. It may be your home, technically, but under the views of the law of whatever state you're in, it may not be your home. Now you can fight that all you want in court and maybe you'll win, but you will cost you a lot of money. So depending on the state, guys, put whatever state, I'm not familiar with every state law across the country, but if in your state, is your RV considered your home? The same as your sticks and bricks. Put it in the comments below. Guys, none of these videos would be possible without the great sponsors we have. And today, this needs no introduction. Liquify by Matt's RV Reviews, one of our best friends outside the RV community, inside the RV community. He has come up with a special formula enzyme base for your black tank that liquefies the waste in there. The stuff is awesome and it smells really great they have this in the orange as well as the lavender in powder as well as liquid we love it it's made in the usa well you didn't let me get to that oh, we love it we love part. using it and the most important part <laughs> is that it's made right here in the usa Woo! by century chemicals out in indiana that was a big thing for matt if you don't believe us guys just go and read the reviews on amazon also we did a video reviewing this live we'll link it above we're gonna put our amazon link down below go check them out guys Great product, great support of the channel, and just an overall great guy. The next question, guys, how do I store my firearm? Well, there's many different ways you can store your firearm, and it depends on what type of firearm you have. If you have a pistol, storage is pretty easy. Unless you're sleeping, the gun should probably be on you at all times, right? When you're in the RV, when you're outside the RV, when you're going out and doing whatever, it probably should be on you. But there's different types of storage depending on what you have. So here is a simple... This is like basic, this simple snap safe that uh, people can get. This is not the best quality guys. There are ones that are much better, but this is super cheap. You can see it has the holes on the bottom so you can bolt it into somewhere. And then it just has a three combination. Can it be defeated? Yes, anything can be defeated. Now, if you have long guns, we talked about on those other videos about long guns. Now, this is gonna be dependent on what type of RV you have. Most people that have trailers or towables, they have a big truck. Trucks are easy, guys. There's a lot of different options out there. You have uh, bed racks that you can put your, your long guns in that lock and they're secured into the bed. You also have different types of racks that maybe you can put into your storage bays under your bed. We'll put a couple of links down below. This is very personal, guys. If you decide to carry a firearm, you have to have a way to secure it. Now, one quick thing, if you carry a pistol and say that you know, you're know you going somewhere, you're going to a pool, you're going to a gym, you know that you, don't, you can't have that pistol on you, that gun on you, and you just want to 
make it as safe as possible. You don't have storage. One easy way, guys, what you can do, just take it apart. And the reason why I say this is, yeah, maybe one of your parts would get stolen, but if you take the pieces apart, specifically, this is the one with the serial number on here. This, this is actually the gun, right? This is what uh, government considers the guns, the one with the serial number. But if I take this with me, and I put this uh, somewhere and I separate it from this, this is not a functional weapon anymore. So if it gets, if a piece gets stolen, it's still not gonna be out in the street, maybe used for a crime. So that's a very easy way to, to do that. Or if you have a, a long gun, maybe just disable some parts on there. If you don't have storage, ultimately you wanna get some kind of secure storage. The next question, we've gotten this a couple of times. If I only have the budget for one firearm, what do you recommend? This is all personal, this is only my personal opinion. If I only had the budget for one firearm, I would recommend a pistol. Now, I can't tell you what type of pistol because it's gonna be what type of shooter you are, how comfortable it is for your body. This may work for you, may not work for you. But why do I recommend a pistol? Because it's utility, right? You can have this, it will be enough to, in a self-defense situation, in your RV, in your car, at your home. And this is small enough that I can just keep it on my body all the time, very easily, concealable. Also, it's small enough that I can carry extra magazines in my pocket if I need be. I could have an extra magazine over here. Hopefully I didn't pull the wire out of my microphone. But you can carry you know, quite a few rounds easily. I would suggest is also these type of pistols, striker fire pistols, which are the most common out there, they're relatively inexpensive. The only thing I would suggest, get a, a reputable brand. Glock, Sig, uh, Smith & Wesson, Beretta, Springfield Armory. There's all, don't, don't get like the midnight special. Spend a little bit more, and when I talk about a little bit more, you're talking about four to $600. You don't need to go crazy. Get a quality product, and then whatever money you have left over, use it for training. Really important, if you carry a firearm, it is a perishable skill. You don't naturally have that skill if you've never shot, especially a pistol. There, there are some basic things that you need to know. There are some scenarios that you should run through. Uh, people ask, where can I get training? NRA, USCCA, they're really good resources for showing you your local places where you can train. But there's some other nationally known ones out there. Six Hour Academy up in New Hampshire is a really good place. You have Gunside Academy there out in Arizona, they're a really good place. Glock has all different types of, uh, of shooting schools. So there's many of them out there. You don't wanna just go to the range and just plink a couple and take it. You, you wanna have some more realistic training. If you get the training, th this is nothing to be afraid of. Right? A lot of people, when they first get a firearm, they're intimidated by it because they don't understand it. They, they think it's gonna go off accidentally. They think they're gonna shoot somebody accidentally. Well, if you have proper training, this just becomes another tool. It's just another tool in the toolbox. You become very comfortable and it can become fun. Now, this is another common question that we've gotten. This has kind of been some people fight on <laughs> the comments about this. It's gonna be open carry versus conceal carry. Now, I'm gonna tell you my opinion. My opinion is you should conceal carry, but there are people of the opinion that you should open carry. First of all, let's talk about what the difference is. Because if you're new to firearms, you may not even, like, what is this guy talking about? So let me, once again, show clear firearm, guys. I'm gonna just send that slide forward. So open carry is what you traditionally see like a police, a uniform police officer carrying. You might see people just out there, carrying that firearm right there out there, showing their thing. So concealed carry, I'm sorry, open carry is openly carrying your firearm on in display, right? So some of the mindset behind, behind why people open carry is number one, they want to express their constitutional right to carry a firearm. And that is great. They wanna show it, this is my right, I'm gonna carry it, and, and that's what I'm gonna do. Another big reason, and we want, when you put in the comments below, if you're open carry, why do you feel, why do you open carry? Second big reason, and this is not deniable really, it's easier to draw. So I have both conceal and open on me right now because I'm gonna demonstrate, but it is easier to draw when you're open carry because there's nothing in the way. So I can just come out right here versus if I'm in the conceal position over here, I kind of have to get the shirt up come out this way. So there is definitely an advantage regarding the draw with open carry. The biggest reason, the last reason that a lot of people give is it's a deterrence to crime. And, and maybe, maybe it's a deterrence to crime. And, and we've gotten this comment, well, 
police officers were exposed to open carry, well, it's a, do people attack police officers? Well, actually they do. And, and most police officers that wear open carry are in uniform. And the reason why they do that is several. One, easier to draw. Number two, they have a ton of crap on their belt and they carry a full size pistol. So you can't keep a pistol in here or in here when you have your taser, you have your extra magazines, you have your pepper spray, you have your ass, you have your, your gloves in the back, you have handcuffs. So there's a lot of stuff here. It, you just can't do it. So that's why most patrol police officers will wear open carry. A lot of cops that you don't know are cops that are unmarked, undercover, they don't carry open carry, they carry conceal for a reason. I would suggest just to, just to think if somebody is going to commit a crime, especially a violent crime, an armed crime, a good chance they have thought that out prior, you're in that way because they see you with the firearm, just like they see the cop with the firearm, which is gonna bring us to the next thing is open carry, opens yourself up to being disarmed, right? This is a big thing as police officers responding to calls. Every call you go to is a gun call. There may not be a gun in that house when you arrive, but as soon as you walk in the house, there's a gun there. There may be multiple gun there. Why? Your gun, your partner's gun, right? There's been a lot of cops that have been killed out there with their own gun because they've been disarmed and it's not that hard to do. What do you grab? What do you grab? He's got my gun. What? He's got my Let go of his gun! No, I'm gonna kill myself. Stop! And the thing is, police officers are hyper vigilant of this. So you see, if you see a cop talking to somebody, they're usually talking this way, gun away. You walk up behind a cop and the gun said, you're gonna get their attention right away. They, they're always seen. Most citizens are not that way. I, I don't, I'm not gonna say all, I'm gonna say most. And I know when I was on patrol, it's, it's taxing. Once you are out of uniform, you don't wanna deal with that because you're always on alert. And I would suggest that you probably don't wanna deal with that 24 seven or whenever you're carrying that pistol displayed. Now, if you continue to insist to open carry, I would suggest if you're gonna have your pistol exposed, at least get a holster with some kind of retention. Now, what I mean about retention, this is Safari Land holster. I mean by retention that, hon, can you just try to grab that pistol from my, my holster? Pull, try to pull it out. You can't pull it out. There is a retention on here that I have to defeat. Now, that doesn't know the criminals don't know how to defeat this, they do. But at least it gives you a little bit extra. So on this one, you saw MJ trying to pull it. It won't come out. There's actually a, a, a thumb thing that I have to put down then it releases it out. So that may give you an extra millisecond, but I suggest do not get a cheap leather holster with one snap. If you're going to be carrying open, at least get a retention holster. I would also suggest that if you're going to be carrying open to run over scenarios of gun retention. Somebody wants to take your gun, they want to kill you, right? Or do harm. I would suggest that you get into some kind of training to be able to retain that gun. If you're, if you're going to be put it out there, just know people are out there, people are watching you, please get that training. Now, talking about another big reason what I don't suggest open carry is that it calls attention to you. Now, maybe not from bad people, but maybe from concerned citizens. And if you don't want visits from the cops, because people are calling 911 saying, hey, there's somebody walking around with a big scary gun, you could avoid all that. And I get people say, well, it's my constitutional right. But just understand, if somebody calls that in, the police, whether they like it or not, they have to respond. And if you don't want to have to deal with that, you can very simply just keep it concealed, and then nobody knows what you're carrying. Now, what does this have to do with RVing? Well, I know when I go away, pump gas, I know there's a, there's a lot of people out there from all different places. You don't know who's in those areas. So I just go out just like this, or however I'm dressed. You, you can't see I'm carrying a firearm right now. I know people in the comments say, no, I know, I know you're carrying one, yeah, because I just showed you. But you wouldn't <laughs> see it if you were just walking down the street. But what I have, and what a lot of people that are concealed carrying have, they have the element of surprise. Now, if you're in a gunfight, again, for those open carry people, if I am, want to cause bad harm to you, you're always on the defensive. So if I'm a bad guy, I see the open carry guy, I already have the jump on you. I wanna take you out, it, you are now reacting. Versus if you're concealed carry, yes, you're still on the defensive, but but the person doesn't know your arm. So you may have a little bit of a better chance to catch them off guard. Again, this is not my only my opinion. Most cops out there will tell you they will conceal carry. They don't want people to know that they're carrying a firearm. Next question, should I carry firearm specific liability insurance? I would say yes, I do, because I know how much it costs 
for attorneys, right? Like it's very expensive. There, there's kind of two sides. If you ever got into some kind of altercation, a shooting, there's gonna be two sides to it. There's gonna be the criminal side and there's almost guarantee gonna be the civil side. Now you may get off, you may be completely justified on the criminal side, which you're gonna be paying for an attorney anyway, for that, but even if you're found not guilty, even if it's no bill, you're not indicted, you highly likely are going to get sued, which is the civil side. And there's, there's much less to prove on the civil side than on the criminal side. Either one's gonna cost you a lot of money. Now there are different uh, coverages out there. NRA has them, USCCA has them. There's quite a few out there. I'll put like three links down below, but you wanna make sure that what policy you have what it covers, what it doesn't cover. I'll tell you a lot of these policies, if you get convicted of a bad shoot, you're not, you're not gonna be covered. So you need to know what insurance you're getting, if you're getting it and what it covers. The final question we're gonna address, and there's, there's been a lot, but we wanna keep this video somewhat concise, is less than lethal options. And there are many out there, and I would suggest that you carry less than lethal options. Now, I would never suggest that you carry that to replace the firearm, it's just an additional tool, right? This is all about different tools because every situation is not gonna require a deadly force reaction. It doesn't have to. You may be dealing with just a, a stupid drunk that wants to cause a problem and there's other solutions out there. Pepper spray, super cheap, super effective. I've been sprayed with pepper spray, it sucks. It really does suck, but it doesn't work all the time. Most of the time it does, but it's a terrible feeling when you get hit with that. Tasers, there are tasers out there. Guys, those work, if, but again, they're not 100%, but if those probes hit you, they work. You're incapacitated for five seconds, 20 seconds, however that taser is set up. And then you have other, like the pepper guns, the burners, and then that's a big deal. I'm not really a big fan of that because that's, that's like carrying a pistol. And I don't know if I wanna carry two things on me that are, that are that large. For me, pistol, pepper spray, good. If, if I was really super hyper vigilant, maybe a, a taser, but I know some people are totally, they can't see themselves carrying a firearm. They don't like firearms. Have an alternative, but something is better than nothing. I'm going to put links down below to different types of storage, insurance, places of resources for information, training. We'll put the links down below, guys. Are there any other questions that you may have? We hit some of the common ones on here but there's a lot to take into account when you are being with the firearm if you choose to do so but there's also a lot on the line right you're RVing with the firearm because you value your freedom and you value your life and your family's life if you like videos like this guys to the left of us we're going to put the RVing with firearms playlist we're going to put our RV newbies playlist and for myself and MJ it's a journey of a lifetime and we'll see you on the road